Good morning. Who loves the sunshine? Isn't it a wonderful bonus to be here on October the 20th in this fabulous weather? Our announcements today, it is Happy Anniversary Sunday, so may I wish you all a happy anniversary as well. All are welcome to stay for cake and ice cream. We ask that you join us next Sunday, October the 27th at 10.30 a.m. for our service led by Reverend Marilyn Arthur. Welcome pot lunch follows. There are tickets for sale for Rescue Junction, <clears throat> a concert on November the 10th at 7 p.m. Usually a sold out performance, so get your tickets. They're $20 each from Tricia Wetlaufer and or Bev Neeb after the service. Um, there is a poster in Zion Hall. And there will be a congregational meeting November the 17th for the purpose of elections. Are there any other announcements? I see some new faces. Welcome to all today as we celebrate the 55th anniversary of Grace United Church. Acknowledgement of the land. We acknowledge that Grace is situated on the traditional territory that was shared between the Mississauga, Anishinaabewaki, and the Attawandarak peoples. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties. We are grateful for the opportunity to meet here and to thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land since time immemorial. We are grateful to have the opportunity to live, work, and play on this land. Cece, would you like to light the candle, please? <laughs> I don't know how many of you might remember Cece, but she's not, a lot bigger than she used to be. <laughs> We light this candle to remind us that God's house glows with love and light and that the risen Christ is always with us. Amen. Thank you. Our call to worship is responsive. Let us worship on this anniversary Sunday. Since the beginning of time, God has poured light and life into creation. We come today seeking to open our hearts, our minds, and our lives to the mystery of the Holy Spirit. The Creator is at work among us. Words of comfort, guidance, and inspiration are offered to each person. Praise God, the source of strength for the present and hope for the future. Praise God, who has created and is creating, spirit of life, yesterday, today, and always. And now let us join together to sing this hymn, which I heard Marilyn playing as we came in this morning. Come in, come in and sit down from Voices United, number 395.
Let us come together with our prayers of approach and confession. Holy God, gracious teacher, loving leader, we have come to be with you as a community bound together by our faith and trust. Raise our hearts to joy, lift our souls to discovery, replenish our spirits with light enough to share. We are here to worship you and to discover your truth. Holy God, your wise spirit cries out for us to follow the way of God. Let us turn and listen for wisdom's call. Let us join together in a moment of silent prayer. The call of wisdom assures us that when we journey with God, we will find life in all its abundance. Let us take a moment now to greet our neighbor and to pass the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our children's hymn this morning is number 357 from Voices United, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus.
Is it on? It's still red. Called four feet, two sandals.
ladies, thank you for coming forward, but we have a hymn to sing first. <laughs> thank you for that. What a reminder in moving the service along, right? <laughs> This hymn is from More Voices, I Have Called You By Your Name, number 161. to ask you folks to take part in the um, blessing of the prayers, prayer shawls, squares, washcloths, sweaters, vests, scarves, hats, and Izzy dolls. So if there's one or something close to you and you want to hold it while we do this together, that's wonderful. Uh, Shirley and I will read and you'll do the uh, bold part as usual. God of love and comfort, we gather together to celebrate one of the mysteries of Grace United Church. We give thanks for the opportunity, out of love and out of concern for our Christian brothers and sisters, to share a tangible gifts to those in need, these gifts of prayer. While we know that you are always present in our lives and that your love transcends all tragedy, illness, and pain, We also know that sometimes a physical reminder can help bring hope, healing, and peace to someone who is crying out. We pray that these gifts of prayer will comfort to those will bring comfort to those who will receive them. O oh God, open our eyes so that we might see. Open our ears so that we might hear. And open our minds so that we might know who is in need of your healing power. Open our hearts so that we might reach out to them. Without even knowing who will, would receive it, these gifts of prayer were made specifically for the person who will receive it. May they see the intricate love and care given to these gifts, mirroring the intricate love and care that God bestows upon all people. These gifts of prayer were made to bring to someone who feels a chill. May they feel the warm breath of the Holy Spirit as they warm themselves with it. These gifts
gifts of prayer were made to bring comfort to someone who feels alone. May they feel comfort in knowing that someone prayed for them as they feasted together. These gifts of prayer were made to bring peace to someone in need of prayer. May they feel the power of our prayers as they feel the soft arms with their fingers. These gifts were made to remind the recipients that they are part of the family of God. May they feel touched by our love moved by our guidance, and held up by our support. Will you bow in prayer, please? God of creation, redemption, and sustaining grace, we praise you for the opportunity to take part in this ministry so that we might see a world beyond ours. We thank you for putting those in need on our hearts and in our minds so that we might fully live out your call to love and serve. We ask that you bless these gifts of prayer and those who will receive them. May they feel the love, comfort, and peace of your presence, and may your light shine in them and be a beacon of hope that is promised to all of us. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. The chatter of many voices surrounds us. Images of the good life lure us from every side. There are so many voices. So let us be clear. Let us be focused. In many ways, God speaks, but the message is always the same. Love, peace, justice. Those are the
are the gifts of God. We await those blessings as they come to hear God's word. Response of Psalm 149, a paraphrase written by James Taylor. Familiar words aren't enough. New times call for new ways to praise God. So dance, sing, do something. Show your love, God, with your bodies as well as your words. Use every means you have, your music, your work, your social systems, to demonstrate your love for God. God will not shun you because you show your emotions. Love is not limited to important positions or plummy accents, so join together with others. Link your hands and link your lives. Clap your hands and sing. Raise the roof in praise of God. Let the vigor of our voices overflow into your living. Seize each challenge as an opportunity to promote justice among all people. To bring to judgment those who cause pain and suffering. Even ruthless dictators cannot resist the surge of popular pressure. The longer they try to withstand the tide, the longer they drown. That is how to give praise. Let's praise God. Now, reading from the Gospel of Matthew 25, 40 to 45. The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you are who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. The good news of Jesus Christ. Our initial theme for today was to celebrate ministries at Grace United. The prayer shawl ministry has been going now for 11 years, but the one we wanted to focus on the most was because it came to Anne and Marianne and I as we planned for the food booth at the fair and to delve into some of the history of how that evolved. Well, I've heard lots of wonderful oral stories and memories and, uh, but I had hoped to find a little bit more of a historical organization of, organization of the facts. However, I um, did learn that already the food booth was in place before Grace existed. It was being organized and run by the EUB, the Evangelical United Brethren ladies who worshiped in this church before Grace was formed. And uh, not only did they do a sit-down meal for hundreds of people at the fair, while all those tables set up in the back corner, they also prepared cold plates for the evening. So you can imagine what that what, how much work that entailed. Many men were involved. I heard names about Stan Reibling cutting the ham, and Willard um, cutting ham and, and working with that, and folks boiling 10 pounds of potatoes at home and bringing it to the church to make potato salad and so forth. But I went to the library to check newspapers. There's lots of information about the fairs over the years but I never once saw the food booth mentioned. So I only did go through the years from 60 to 69, but if that indicated what I would find in the further years, it was very little. 
or none at all. But while I was going through the newspaper of 1969, newspapers, I, d I did find some information, but it was more about the formation of Grace United Church. And uh, it was interesting to note from the way they talked about it that all four churches had become united churches before the actual formation of Grace sometime in that year. So July 2nd of that year, Zion United Church agrees to unite with Knox United Church. July and August, there were a couple articles about a farewell address given by Reverend Sibbert and Reverend Sims speaking to the loyalty class of Zion United Church. On August the 27th, there was an article about the last picnic of South East Hope United Church, formerly NEUB. Also, um, Reverend Sibbert and James Sittler, who was a student here, were honored by the congregation because they were um, also leaving at, at the time that Grace was formed to start with a new minister. And then on September the 1st, and that's the date that the new United Church congregation was formed. So Zion and Southeast Hope and Knox and Harmony came together and they unanimously um, voted on the name Grace United Church. November the 12th, the new UCW officers were named for Grace United Church. So again, we're probably bringing together four groups of ladies, aides, UCWs, work into one as well. I wonder how that worked with four leaders at the helm. We won't go there. <laughs> November the 12th, there was an article, new UCW officers were named for Grace UCW. November the 19th, sorry, also on November the 12th, an article about Knox United Church, its final supper and program. November the 19th, the Knox ladies held their last bake sale. December the 10th, Zion UCW held their last meeting and dispersed the monies that they had collected over the time period, giving some of it to missions, but also giving some of it to Grace. Also in that uh, our, um, paper, Knox United Church was their last and final meeting, and it was a Christmas program. I think that was too early for Marg Pletch to do her thing, wasn't it, 1969? <laughs> December the 17th, the Loyalty Bible class had their last meeting, and, and Bill may know more if that disbanded in 1969 as Grace was formed, or as it continued as a ministry of Grace United Church. And it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, so the other thing I learned, because I have an ear attuned to Brian's business, and that year the men's club, 1969, served 1,600 people at their sauerkraut dinner. So sauerkraut tickets are up for sale. And there's, <laughs> and there's only 800 available, so you better grab them and run. <laughs> but to tell a bit more of, I'm gonna say the oral history of uh, the food booth at, uh, at the fair, I'm gonna have Mary Ann come forward and share some information that she has found. So in December of last year, while cleaning out my Aunt Linda Wetlofer's apartment after her passing, we came across my Grandma Ruth Wetlofer's diaries. These diaries span the years from 1967 until 2008. What a treasure to find these, and they have been a blessing to read to Mom almost every night in the nursing home. 
If you ever want to know what the weather like was on any given day between those years, you just need to refer to the diaries. Since they only start in 1967, I don't know how long before that that Grandma helped with the fair booth. From her entries in the 60s and 70s, we know they used to serve a full hot meal at the church booth during the noon hour on the Saturday. The following are a few excerpts. On Thursday, September 5th, 1967, she wrote, cooked hams for the fall fair booth and made candy. Friday the 6th, cleaned upstairs, then went to pack candy at the fair booth, came home and went to the fair in the evening. Saturday the 7th, fall fair, worked from 9 to 2.30 at fair, in charge of the dinner, fed 28 with help extra, all totaled about 35 people. So in 1969, she wrote, Thursday the 4th, made chocolate fudge for the fair booth, also pie paste for deep freeze, cooked ham for the booth, two long ones. Friday the 5th, helped at the booth bagging candy, also setting up for dinner for the fair, also made sandwiches. Saturday the 6th, made two pies, then left at 9 o'clock, had 50 some for hot dinner, sold out of everything, hot and humid out, need rain. <laughs> In 1972, she wrote, Friday, September 8th, getting ready for fall fair booth, rain this morning, hoping it will quit for the fair. German girls and boys here to entertain. Very good program, packed house. Saturday the 9th, left for the fair at 9.15. Took charge of the dinner, had a good turnout again. About 50 to 55 dinners, ham and turkey. Finished at one o'clock. In 1973, Friday, September 7th, made three apple pies, two for the fair. Cleaned upstairs, then after dinner went to set up for the fair, Marguerite and I, which I think is Marguerite Whiffen, which would be Ron's mom. Saturday, September 8th, up at 7.30, had put the meat, ham, in the oven for the fair. Also took milk and pie along. My help was, and in this one she mentions some names as far as her help, and with my mom's help, she helped me figure out who they are. So Cora and Catherine, so that would be Cora and Catherine Eckstein. Elaine Z, which would be Elaine Zare, Judy's mom. <laughs> Alice R, which is Alice Reibling, Ken's mom. Shirley B, which we think is Shirley Brunk. And the only one mom could not figure out is Elda R. We don't know who Elda R is, if anybody does. Oh, it is a, oh, a Ribling too? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Had around 30 to 40 in all. Ate all the 40 pounds of ham. We had too many potatoes. Had 20 pounds. Had 10 cans of corn, one can left. Had a good fare. In 1979, Friday, September 7th, helped at the fair by 9.30, was there all day, came home by 5.30, was very tired, had a rest, and then went back to the fair to see the exhibits. Saturday the 8th, cooked two hams for fall fair booth, also helped serve dinner at noon. A nice day. And the last one I have from, that I grabbed from 1987. Friday the 11th, cloudy looks like rain, which we do not want for our fall fair starting tonight. Going into help at 9.30 at Needlecraft. Sure had a big day, finished at 4.30. Saturday the 12th, back up again by quarter to 11. Helped at church booth till one o'clock. Rested for a while, then went home after four from the fashion show, which was very good. Back, a ben, back again by 15 to seven for arm wrestling and air band. 
Sure had a great time at night at the dance, home by three. <laughs> but it says right here, she went to church the next morning. <laughs> <clears throat> it looks like Grandma hung up her Fairbooth apron somewhere in the late 80s. Her later entries often ended with, I was very tired. She definitely worked hard and put a lot of time into the church booth. Knowing my grandma, I no doubt her and her help in the booth also had a lot of fun. My mom also remembers back to the full dinner days where she would make pies and one year made the coleslaw. After the dinners were discontinued and we switched to burgers and hot dogs, she continued to make two apple pies for many years before having to give in and purchase them from quails. Mom said the booth was always known for their pies, which were homemade in many of our kitchens, our parents, and our grandparents. Mom also remembers specific families that would come and visit before heading to the fair for the dinner. She said the Ankenman family consisting of Wes, Jerry, and Alf would be there every year. My memories of the church booth are of the best burgers and hot dogs, and of course, the smell of fried onions as soon as you entered the arena. I don't know when I started helping in the booth. I'm thinking it was late 90s, early 2000s. And like in grandma's days, we had a lot of fun. I usually worked the Saturday shift from four to seven with, Dart, with Bart Tetman on the grill and later Wayne Schufelt along, alongside Carol Young Marsha Bender, Joanne Bean, and Elaine Green. We called ourselves Wayne's Girls. <laughs> and the shift never went by when we didn't hear Carol sing her famous I Know a Weenie Man <laughs> song, <laughs> which maybe if you ask her later, she'll sing it for you. <laughs> I usually fried onions, and in the year 2000, year 2000, I finished at the booth and went straight over to the dance at the hall. During the evening, I had a conversation with the guy I played volleyball with and even apologized for smelling like fried onions. He said he loves onions, and we married two years later. <laughs> the full dinners, burgers, and dogs have now evolved to a much smaller booth, serving delicious homemade muffins, cookies, and candy floss, made with love from many of you in our congregation congregation. We still have volunteers to organize and work the booth, and I hope we can continue to be a familiar face in our corner of the arena at the Tavi Fall Fair. Thank you, Mary Ann. Oh, Dale, we know your secrets. That was a wonderful encapsulation of the evolution of moving from serving full dinners, although we don't necessarily have dates and so on in place, but um, I'm going to say for close to 20 years, if not 20 years, we had this other committee of Marcia, Carol Schufelt, I'm going to miss names, Tori, not Tori, Brenda, Shirley. Deb Steveley, and they worked really hard because they also needed to have many volunteers. And one of the comments we heard at the fair still this year, we miss the homemade pies. Always a good thing. Um, we have another hymn to sing from More Voices, 154, Deep in Our Hearts.
that song is Jen Stevely's favorite hymn. And Jen Stevely, as some of you may know, is currently in South Korea for a year. And Deb and, the, and Bill are there visiting her. So a wave to Jen Stevely. Let it's time for the offering. Let us give as each is able, according to the blessings that God has given each one of us. On this day of celebration, we honor you, O God, by dedicating anew ourselves and all we have to your purposes. Out of love for you, for Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, we bring to you our gifts, knowing that you will use them to spread your love around the world. Amen. Let us now come before God with our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Loving God, source of all that is, was, and will be, we are profoundly grateful for the treasures of our past. The traditions, the music, the prayers, our ancestors in the faith. Those pioneers built a place where the church could be the center of the community a place where people could come together in song and prayer with their neighbors, a place where children could learn and grow in faith, a place where all the important events of life could be marked, baptisms, weddings, and funerals. And so we call out to those ancestors, to those people who lived well and died well, to those who carry within them the legacy that is here for us today, a legacy that is rich and beautiful to bring all that is good and true to us from the past that we might learn from those who have gone before us, those on whose shoulders we stand. May we draw on their wisdom of how to create a sense of home, of family, of community in a way that opens to one another. And from their example, may we find in our hearts the courage to do something large or small, to bring our gifts out into the world, so that by our love, the world will know us as followers of Jesus. Loving God, help us to treasure the gifts of our past and to recognize those gifts that are right for us today, which can be a foundation for our future. Lord, we pray this week especially for Keith, Brenda, Marg, Gail, Barb, Richard, Elizabeth, and Ivy. And we pray also for those people whom we know and love and for whom we are concerned. And we pray for ourselves, trusting in God's wisdom and compassion. We pray for all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who taught us to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And now our closing hymn, I think, is an old favorite rousing hymn. I know the ladies from Lingelbach sure love it. And uh, it's found in Voices United, number 714, Come We That Love the Lord. And before our benediction, if I could um, tell you that there are photos downstairs on the table in Zion Hall that you can look at, a few that we have found from the food booths, also those newspaper articles that I was quoting, and there are magnifying glasses so you can read it much more easily. Hope that you will continue sharing your stories about the food fair or other things as you think of them and enjoy some cake and ice cream as we continue to celebrate the formation of Grace United Church 55 years ago, September the 1st. Let us go now to be God's people in the world, and may God bless you and keep you. May God's face be known to you in the faces of everyone you meet. May God's work be seen through the work of your hands and the places your feet travel. May you know the peace that is God's gift and the blessing of the sunset of the day, the stars of the night, and the promise of tomorrow. Mm -hmm.